Hey guys, welcome back to Ancient Amnesia Podcast. I'm Josh. Hope you're enjoying the content. Thanks for being here. We got a lot of new members. We really appreciate everybody who joined. Um, please go through our archives. We've got lots of info. I go to our website, ancientamnesia.com. Um, we're trying new things, working with a lot of cool people. Um, and if you're interested in coming on the show, talking about subjects, um, please e email us at info at ancientamnesia.com. Um, Com, or sorry, info at ancientamnesia at gmail.com and, um, you know, get on the show because we, we actually really want other people to uh, be a part of uh, what we're doing. Um, we've actually met a lot of people that are on our page that are incredibly smart and have taught us a lot of things. We've had a lot of good shows. Go to YouTube. Uh, we have over 100 podcasts recorded um, on our YouTube channel. So, Dig in, have fun, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, today I wanted to uh, cover this article and just a little bit about it. We've been posting some other things on it and have been for years. Um, and, you know, we don't believe in the um, uh, conservative view of uh, Darwinian evolution. You probably know that if you've been following us. Now, we did a recent podcast with Michael Cremo talking about the evidence of um, modern humans in um, the fossil record, it goes back over 1 million years. So um, that alone is stands pretty tall on um, proof uh, that we have been here for a while. So our origins are still uh, unknown. We don't know where we really came from on the planet. And uh, although a lot of people like to assume this Darwinian evolutionary model is uh, unbreakable, it's just not true. Um, and so we wanted to highlight some information that's been coming out recently that kind of... Um, is in this direction and also uh, shows you a new angle of what we mean by, uh, you know, the past uh, humans on the planet and how they were in some ways just as modern as we were and, and definitely just as intelligent. Um, article we found by the Guardian uh, that was reporting on science that was discovered that Neanderthals were not less intelligent than modern humans. Um, the view of Neanderthals as club welding brutes is one of the most enduring stereotypes in science. The researchers who trawled the archaeological evidence say that the image has no basis, whatever. Um, and it's true, you know, we all kind of laugh colloquially about Neanderthals being, you know, dumb, right? Um, but uh, that's not true. We do know that their cranial capacities were higher um, and they had larger brains. So, you know, there's some evidence there that they were definitely very intelligent. Uh, they were lit alive around 350,000 years ago to 40,000 years ago. Their population spread from Portugal. Uh, in the west to the Altai Mountains in Central Asia in the east. Apparently, they va vanished from the fo fossil record um, when modern humans arrived in Europe. So um, they kind of vanished 40,000 years ago, not very long ago um, in, in the scope of that time. We actually have a little timeline where we can kind of check out, you know, here, here they are um, right here, right before us. So, you know, they look a little bit more like cousins than anything else. Um, definitely not a creature that we may have come from. Um, so, and you can see how much, how many gaps there is um, from these more robust hominid creature skulls and these modern types. So there's a lot of missing data um, that we really just don't know. And we also have something that we're going to, we're going to bring up about um, Afarensis and some questions um, about that find here in a second, but um, you can just see from this graph that, wow, you know, there's a lot of things missing. Um, so um, the uh, University of Colorado, a couple colleagues uh, went through the archaeological records to look for evidence of modern human superiority that underpinned nearly a dozen theories about the Neanderthal's demise and found that none of them actually stood up. So one thing you have to understand is that we're looking at secondary um, scientific literature, you know, when you hear about these things, textbooks, things like that's secondary literature, that's opinions being made from the primary scientific literature, which is the actual reports, the records, the actual archaeological records um, that have been found, collected, and this is, you know, very old, I've been looking at this stuff for 100 years now, so there's a lot of archives, and what happens is that once um, an idea gets kind of solidified within the sciences, um, people don't question whether that primary scientific literature is existent. They just assume that because these researchers um, for, you know, a few generations um, said that this was true, that they just basically are trusting that they did look at it correctly. 
But what happens is that when people go back and look at the uh, primary scientific literature and the actual records, um, what they're saying is the explanations make good stories, but the only problem is there's no archaeology to actually back them up. And this has actually happened multiple times. Um, so this is what we mean by ancient amnesia. We do not know um, where we come from uh, in, in a very real sense. You know, we as humans on this planet have no idea like what, how we got here. We, we did not evolve into this creature here. If that's not true, then what brought us here? How did we actually get on the planet? Um, the researcher said that part of the misunderstanding that had arisen because researchers compared Neanderthals with their successors, the modern humans who lived in the upper Paleolithic rather than the humans who lived at the same time. It's like saying that people in the 19th century were less intelligent than those in the 21st because they didn't have laptops and space travel. That's a really good point. Um, you know, just because we have these uh, toys and all of these instruments and uh, we've been through the industrial revolution and created all of these awesome machines doesn't mean that our brains, our actual intelligence, um, our capabilities, our biology is any different than it was a few hundred years ago. So um, it's a good thing to contemplate when we talk about uh, human evolution, advancement, or even uh, te technology expression in ancient culture. Um, if you've ever read any kind of ancient books, um, you know, I would suggest to read Marcus Aurelius' Meditations. You're going to find more truth, more um, <laughs> just logic, reason, and sharpness of mind out of a person who lived 2,000 years ago than almost anybody that you've ever met today. Any professor you've been to, had been to see or any author that you've read, um, it, it really is um, an eye-opening experience when you start reading the minds of, of the ancients. They were, they were just like you and I. The evidence for cognitive inferior, inferiority is simply not there. Uh, what we are saying is that the, con the conventional view of Neanderthals is not true. The study is published in the journal uh, Plus One. So, so what did kill off our equally intelligent extinct cousins? They asked. Uh, it's a complex question. Genetic studies decoded that the Neanderthal genome actually might reveal some, cl some clues. The study showed that Neanderthals lived in small, fragmented groups, interbred to some extent with modern humans, and some of their inbred male offspring were infertile. The arrival of modern humans may simply have swamped and assimilated them. Stereotypes help people to order their world, but the stereotype of primitive Neanderthal is now gradually eroding, at least in scientific circles. Um, so really, really interesting. Um, that does shed a new light um, on um this big question and i think that um there's also something that this ties into that we posted recently and we wanted to um show you guys how a lot of this stuff is kind of breaking down we posted a recent um article talking about the potential of australopithecus afarensis which we can see here on this timeline is right here so this would be a pillar right of the evolutionary model you can't take out some of these prototypes uh, because they are the ones that are said to have created all this other diverse, um, you know, hominid form that would then eventually lead to another section of even more advanced. So you can't take out these these pillars and keep the roof on the house uh, to some of this theory. So when you go back and you actually look at uh, some of this Australopithecus afarensis stuff and you realize that there's evidence um, that we actually had um, – labeled this as a modern human when it was actually potentially a chimpanzee um, and just a an ancient primate. Very, very interesting. So it's called Lucy Dethroned, and um, the discovery of the creature uh, known as Lucy, who is this afarensis, um, is basically the, the, the model uh, of, you know, launching this uh, human prehistory and, and tying it into some of these other uh, creatures. It says buried, buried in the sandy hillside of the slope was an arm bone, a single bone that eventually led to the unearthing of a skeleton that was nearly 40% complete. While the description of this now famous find might lead one to think that it was similar to some serendipitous treasure unearthed in a movie script, the truth is far from that. The fossils 
that Dr. Johansson unearthed were destined to become one of the most famous and most controversial finds of all time. It would shake every single limb to the, in the alleged hominid family tree, completely upsetting the then current theories about how man came to be bipedal. Richard Leakey and Roger Lewin wrote of the find that Johansson had stumbled on a skeleton that was about 40% complete, something that is unheard of in human prehistory farther back than about 100,000 years. Um, his hominid had died at least 3 million years ago. Um, but as additional studies were carried out, it became obvious that this missing link was actually too good to be true. Um, Dr. Johnson named his Austro, uh, Australopithecus afarensis, the southern ape from the, the Afar Depression of northeastern Ethiopia. The creature quickly earned the nickname Lucy after the Beatles' song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which was said to be playing all through the celebratory night back at the um, archaeological camp. The fossil, officially designated as AL2881, consisted of skull fragments, a lower jaw, ribs, and arm bone, a portion of the pelvis, a thigh bone, and fragments of shin bones. It was said to be an adult and was dated about 3.5 million years ago. The remains of some 34 adults and 10 infants, all of which he dated 3.5 million years ago. In their assessment of exactly where this new species fit in, um, they said that the new hominid fossils um, can constitute the earliest definitive evidence of the family uh, hominidae. Um, not only was this fossil fine fi unusually complete, but it is also believed to have been from an animal that walked in an upright fashion, as well as being the oldest human ancestor. So the oldest human ancestor, this is the foundational creature um, to the model. Um, so we have to have this if we're going to have um, human evolution. We can't take this out. Um, and, you know, this is pretty, this is pretty foundational. Uh, if this is not true, then they really have nothing. Um, reading on, uh, that one of the ironic discoveries regarding Lucy had to do with the size of her skull. Prior to her discovery, evolutionists had assumed that these ape-like species had evolved larger brains, which allowed them to crawl down out of the trees and begin foraging for food on the ground. According to evolutionary timelines, the creature adopted bipedalism as their primary form of transportation and once on the ground began to use tools. Lucy, as it happened, took this nice, neat little story and turned it upside down. Her brain case was not enlarged. In fact, from all appearances, it was comparable to the size of common chimpanzee. Hmm, interesting. And yet, Johansson and White steadfastly defended the position that this creature walked uprightly like man. They noted that bipedalism to have been the dominant form of terrestrial locomotion employed by the um, Hadar and Latoli hominids. Morphological features associated with this locomotor mode um, are clearly manifested in these hominids. And for this reason, the um, Latoli and Hadar hominid remains are unequivocally assigned to the family hominid. Pay attention. Um, Dr. Johnson insisted that Afarensis was the direct ancestor of man. In fact, the phrase, the dramatic discovery of our oldest human ancestor can be found emblazoned on the cover of his 1981 book, Lucy, The Beginnings of Humankind, okay? Um, so, a lot of hype, and we see this too, right? When they push the stuff, um, they get it out there, they create a frenzy of excitement, they get as much consensus quickly as possible they they then start writing books and putting out things and this is how it gets out there and and people just start questioning whether this was true i mean why would all of these, these scientists and why would all these people um you know be lying to us or why would they be pushing this remember that this this is the missing link in those days of what they needed to then go forward with the next phase um to to make this theory uh true and acceptable scientifically so in these people they get involved they get invested in these ideas you know they're, they're really really looking for evidence to support it and they're willing to bend a little bit because in their minds you know they believe that this is this is true um you know whatever they their belief is is this what they're going to start seeing in the field they're going to start kind of making the evidence fit um so that they can feel right about their theories um 
if Lucy and her descendants were discovered to be nothing more than apes or chimps, then all of Johansson's fame and fortune would vanish instantly like an early morning fog hit by a hot noonday sun. Remember that this single discovery made his career. So there we have it. Um, this guy got famous on this, you know, and people are the same. It doesn't matter whether they're celebrities or they're professors or, you know, everybody gets a rush, you know, and they feel like they're basically on top of the world in their field. Um, and they're going to do what they can to hold on to that because it makes them feel good. And a lot of money comes in from this. Um, one can understand why he would have such a vested interest in keeping this fossil upright and walking on two feet. If others were to discover that Lucy was not a biped, then her hominid status would be called into question. Something far less rewarding um, for Dr. Johansson. So the question is, did Johansson examine the evidence prior to making his decision about Lucy's ability to walk uprightly? Or was Lucy upright and walking even before all of her fossils were uncovered from the moment that single arm bone buried in the sand was discovered? Johnson admitted that immediately after seeking uh, seeing the single arm bone, this time I knew once at once I was looking at a hominid elbow. I had to convince Tom, whose first reaction was that it was a monkey's. Okay. Um, however, as more and more researchers gained access to the fossils, the status began to be questioned, seriously questioned. So we would like for you to examine the evidence regarding this famous fossil find and then determine for yourself whether Lucy and her kin were in fact our ancestors or merely ancient apes or chimps. As a start, consider the following anatomical discoveries that have been made since your ancestors' initial declaration of Lucy as an entirely new hominid species. Now, this is a really, really in-depth article um, looking at the evidence. We're not going to go through all of this, but we thought that was enough for you to kind of get the gist um, of the overall theme that we're doing on this kind of quick show is that human evolution has a lot of holes in it. Um, and even the, um, what would be considered the solid evidence uh, that stands behind the um, theory uh, is still really kind of questionable. And, and so you do have to go back and, and understand that our origins are really more mysterious than we know that human evolution is a, a theory that's, actually kind of starting to uh, get less and less uh, stable as it goes. So this starts to open up the mystery as to what brought us here. We truly are, um, you know, this is, this is the, one of the most um, foundational ancient amnesias uh, that is, does it exist. So um, we hope you liked it. Um, please go to our uh, Facebook page, check us out. We've got a lot of good material coming in, We're doing a lot of stuff. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, reach out to us if you want to come on the show. We do want to hear from people uh, that are um, on our uh, page uh, because there are a lot of people, 42, 43,000 followers. We know there's a lot of people that would love to come on and, and there's really smart people that are part of our uh, movement. Also go to our discussion group if you want to hang out and chat with Dave and, and the rest of us. Um, and until then, we will see you next time.